this blade. It is the last link I have. you're here. I'm wondering if I can... Oh, uh, the shelf on the left, second row down, first X on the right. That one's yours. And the garden hoe belongs to Iknal, and the hammer is Pakal, so make sure you take the one that's yours. I haven't even said why I'm here. But looks like you're about to head out for a break. <laughs> yes. But I am going to take it right here. The temperature is just perfect today. Really? But doesn't it feel a lot hotter than usual? I really don't want to stay out in this heat. Exactly. In hot weather like this, customers don't tend to stick around and talk when they're coming to place orders or pick up the goods. I see. Oh, here comes another customer. I'll just leave you to it then, and pick up my axe. Sure, sounds good to me. Hey, Shilonin! Oh, Traveler, Paimon! We meet again. Oh, you two seem to be in good spirits. How's your uh, Pilgrim's Chronicle been? Run into any issues? Oh, good. It was also my first time receiving a Pilgrim's Chronicle, even though I've already turned it over to you. There are still a lot of things that could go wrong, so I wasn't sure if there'd be any issues. Huh? So, uh, what are the chances that something might still go wrong? Well, less than the chances of Mualani accidentally falling off a spirit way, I'd say. Oh, well that definitely would never happen. I found the actually loaning. Thanks a lot. By the way... Nitchka's birthday's coming up real soon. Are you planning to visit her? I prepared a gift, and was just getting ready to take it to her. Uh, you're not planning on giving the kid a full set of pliers again, are you? Or, let me guess, woodworking tools? Yeah, that's right. Flowers will wither, and toys will break, and snacks are quickly forgotten once they're eaten. But a set of durable work tools will always stay with you and get you through many sticky situations. Well, still, I won't be giving Nichka any tools this year. She wrote me a letter saying that she'd like a copy of To Kill the Brave. The book is not what you call a bestseller, but luckily, I have a few copies in my collection. They were really old editions that were published a long time ago, but they should still be readable. <laughs> Children her age love fairy tales. The last time I was at Fasoli's, I even brought an H Uh. Huh. Wait. What did I bring her again? It must have been her favorite thing, but. Uh. Why can't I remember it anymore? Oh, it is quite hot today. Seems you're about to pass out from the heat. Do you even remember your own name? My memory can't be this bad. It's just these last few days. I've been forgetting things for some odd reason. Well, in that case, why don't you use the Blaze Gem inscription you have as a memo to engrave some important things to remember? After all, that inscription will never wear out, and it's easy to carry. I'd say that's quite a fitting use for it. <clears throat> you do have a point, but my inscription is almost already full. No, no. I engraved some wishes on my Blaze Jam inscription. 
You know, just some dreams that I have for the future and things I'd like to accomplish one day. Even though Tasoli has said that from an aesthetic point of view, it would be best for people to keep their inscription short, this Blaze Gem inscription was still made by a name engraver, the forger of ancient names themselves. Everyone thinks that the inscription she made might have some wondrous powers. So, many people who bought Blaze Gem inscriptions engraved their wishes and dreams on them in hopes that they would come true. Sounds kind of like a wish granter. But if you do that, won't everyone be able to see your wishes and dreams? <laughs> Don't worry. We usually ask Tasoli to add the inscriptions for us. She has a unique method of engraving. With her method, the light must be at a certain angle in order to see the text. Without the right angle of lighting, the Blaze Gem inscription will just look like a pretty stone. That's true. In the end, a Blaze Gem inscription is essentially just a piece of rock. It doesn't have the power to grant people's wishes. Making wishes to it is like uh, shouting into an echoing valley. The only one who will answer is yourself. But using it as a journal for your wishes is also fine. Carrying them with you and taking a look from time to time can be a good source of encouragement. Well, as long as you don't suddenly change your mind and want to take your wishes back, that is. These things are extremely durable. It would take a lot of effort to change the words. And I don't think anyone would willingly part with it either. They're not cheap and very hard to get. If you ever lost it, you'd just be filled with regret. Still, it's, huh, it's really strange. Given Auntie's skill, how could it take so long for her to make one? Huh. Oh, well, I hope someone didn't give her an idea of making fewer and selling for more. <laughs> it's true. Chevin would totally have put that in her ear. Still, I don't think it's such a bad thing for Tasoli to make some money by selling these. At least she and little Nechka are better off now and won't have to worry about the cost of treating her illness anymore. I was really worried about their family at first, and was even planning to send them some... Uh... Send some... Huh? What was I planning to send to Nechka again? Ugh, this memory of mine... All right, if you stay out in the heat for any longer, I'm afraid even the inscription won't be able to save your memory. You should, uh, go back. Yeah, get some rest. Right. Uh, right. <laughs> Please give my regards to Tlesoli and Nechka. <sighs> What's going on? Maybe I should go talk to Aaronly to get some medicine. So you'll be going to Nechka's birthday party too, she loaded? Oh, perfect! Then let's go together! Oh, yeah, sure, but I didn't expect you to know Tlesoli too. She hasn't been coming to the tribe much lately, so how did you get a chance to talk with her? Oh, so that's how you met her. She even wants to use volcanic crystal as a forging material. Eh, I guess she's uh, really pulling out all the stops for her daughter. Then, let's just go and ask. Come on, I want to give her the book anyway. Huh? Wait a second, aren't birthday gifts supposed to be a surprise? If we ask Nechka, then she'll know what gift we'll be giving her! And that would ruin the surprise! But if you don't ask her, then how will you know what kind of present she would like? Here's another idea. Perhaps you can also give her a storybook based on what she wrote in her letter. That might be a good option. But shouldn't we give it a little more thought? If we all give her books, it might seem like we didn't put much effort into it. Shilonen, have you really never asked her what she would like the most? There must be something else she'd like besides books. Unfortunately, no. Nechka's illness has kept flaring up over the past few years. 
Apparently, she couldn't do anything during that time other than rest in bed. She didn't even have the strength to talk to anyone. It wasn't until recently that she started to recover from her illness and regained strength to write letters to others. Anyway, there's no need to overthink it. Worst case scenario, I can split the book into two volumes and we can each give her one. No, that's terrible! That would really look like we didn't try! Let's just go ask Nechka. Even though it would ruin the surprise, we could at least get her something that would make her happy. Anyway, could you tell us a bit more about the book that you're getting her? Is it really that unpopular? Well, it's a little difficult to explain. Y you see, there are actually two versions of To Kill the Brave. The premise of the book is pretty straightforward. It's basically about a set of twin brothers working to defeat a demon lord. But after defeating the demon lord, the older brother, To Kill, discovers that the king's spirit has possessed his younger brother, Remok. In the ending of the original story, the older brother kills his younger brother to defeat the demon lord before jumping into a volcano. I remember there was one line that was super popular at the time. If I still remember right, after being possessed by the goddess Kualikwe, Rimak said, I do not wish to see your blood be reduced to ash, but I have seen the light of your heart and spirit. Remember my name, brother. As long as you remember me, I will never have left. The other version was released only recently. The author heard a suggestion from someone and suddenly decided to try and make a stake in the fairy tale market, so the story was revised. In the revised version, the brothers killed the demon lord together and both survived. According to the author, this gave the story a happy ever after kind of ending. However, the revised version was not well received. After a month on the market, it had hardly sold any copies and the books were collecting dust on the store shelves. The store owners desperately tried to get rid of the book and have resorted to all sorts of promotions and discounts to sell it. Even now, the only edition of To Kill the Brave you can find in the market is the newer one, whereas the older edition is nearly impossible to find. Anyway, I couldn't bring myself to give such a poorly rated book to Nechka, so I spent a few days looking and managed to find a few copies of the old edition in a warehouse. I picked out a copy that looked relatively new and wrapped it up as a present for Nechka. If you're interested, I can give you this extra copy to read. The pages are pretty old though, so please be gentle with it. Oh, and uh, here's a copy of the newer edition too. They gave me a free copy when I went to buy some Shokuadal. So that's how they're trying to sell off the book. Could it really be that bad? Even Paimon's curious now. Let's get going. Tlasoli lives pretty far from the tribe, so it'll take us some time to get there. Go on now, Iyengu. Nechka is still resting. Hey, Tlasoli, we're here! Oh, what a surprise. And even Shilonin is here too. 
been a while since I've seen you, Auntie. I received Nishka's letter. She wanted a copy of To Kill the Brave, right? Well, I've brought the book for her. There are several editions of the book in Natlan, and I wasn't sure which version she'd prefer. I asked a messenger from the Scions of the Canopy. It seems this softcover edition is one of the most popular options, so I brought it for Nechka. <laughs> you haven't changed a bit, Shilonin. Let's go inside. I was just boiling some shokoaddle, so you can all try some. Shilonin used to love drinking shokoaddle. When she was little, she would always have several cups every time she came to visit me. You were already a big girl by the time I finally had my Nechka. All right. For now, let's... Oh. Oh, uh, Auntie. Let's go inside. Traveler, please help me get her into the house. Don't get in the way. All right, let's uh, get indoors. Watch your step, Auntie. Sorry, Nechka's illness has been flaring up recently, so I was up for a few nights. I suddenly started to feel dizzy in the sun. I hope I didn't scare you. Have a seat. I'll fetch you a few cups of shokoaddle. Please wait a moment. Oh, I've already brought them over. This cup's for you, Auntie. And these are for you, too. Shokoaddle? What does it taste like? Paimon's heard that it can be pretty bitter. Traveler, could you give it a try first? Oh, don't worry. Auntie always adds a lot of sugar. It won't be bitter. The last time you came to visit, you were still just a kid. But now you're a pillar of the Children of Echoes. No... Of all Natlan, even. Oh, well, it's all thanks to the drinks I had here, and the books I happened to read. We heard that you two are from the same tribe, but Paimon had no idea you were so close. When I was little, my parents were always talking about how skilled Auntie was at forging ancient names, and how she was a good role model for the rest of us. The moment I became idle at home, they would toss me into Auntie's workshop to watch and learn. Then I would have your parents go back, boil you a pot of shokoaddle, and let you play in the house. Yeah, and then I would drink and listen to you banging away with your tools in the workshop. But eventually, she moved out of the tribe to find some more space, and I didn't have the chance to visit again after that. But why did you seem so familiar with the place when you went to the kitchen for the drinks just now? Because the layout of this place is identical to her old house. Let me see, uh-huh, yeah, that should be Nichka's bedroom then. That's right. <laughs> I remember you used to hunker down in the room to read and draw. But you're all grown up now. Even if you wanted to live here, I'm afraid you've already outgrown Nichka's bed. That's how Nechka sees Shilonin, too. Whenever she's feeling better, she always asks me when her pen pal sister will be coming to visit. Well, yeah, I'm here now, and even brought a gift as an apology. I'll leave the book here. You said Nechka asked you for the book? I hope it wasn't too much trouble to get. Really, I'm surprised that she even asked you for a present. When she's at home, she'd even ask me for permission to eat some snacks. Maybe I've been too strict with her. She's obviously starting to like her big sister more than her own mother. Oh, really? 
Well, I'd say I really haven't done enough to deserve the title of big sister. Yeah, I uh, wasn't able to help her when she was sick and I didn't even come and visit her that many times. Well, the only thing I have been able to do is to help her find some books. Don't be too hard on yourself, Shilonin. You have great responsibilities as the name engraver of the tribe. We both know you are far too busy to take care of her. The responsibilities on your shoulders also became far heavier when I... gave up on my work. You just had more important things to tend to, Auntie. No one in the tribe blames you. We all know that Nechka needs her mother's care. But that doesn't change the fact that I gave up on my work. And even now, I still have not found the courage to pick up my hammer again. I'm sorry to leave you to shoulder all the responsibilities alone, Shilonin. <sighs> oh. Oh, why so somber all of a sudden? Uh, don't be so sad, everyone. Hasn't Nechka gotten better lately? Oh, pff, relax, Auntie. I can handle the work. But once Nechka is back on her feet, you should get back to work and let me have a vacation. You'll be the one who's busy then, and I'll be sitting at the side drinking shokuwaddle and cheering you on. <laughs> if that day really comes, you can have as much shokuwaddle as you like. <laughs> if you asked me before, I wouldn't have even been able to talk about it. But now that she is gradually recovering, I've also gained some courage to face what happened back then. Nechka's illness actually originates from the Abyss. That night, I was in the tribe, having a discussion over the forging of new ancient names. Before we could finish our discussion, the alarm started to ring outside. A horde of monsters from the Abyss suddenly attacked the tribe, so everyone banded together to fight them off. I joined the fray as well, and it wasn't until the monsters were repelled that I got back home with some guards from the tribe. But Nechka was gone. I can't remember how long I spent searching for her. Maybe for two or three days. In the end, we found Nechka at the bottom of a short cliff. She was holding a dried up embercore flower in her hand, and there were traces of abyssal corruption around her wounds. I know. It was all my fault. Before the incident, Nechka had asked if I could forge an ancient name for her. Work was busy at the time, so I told her that if she could find an embercore flower, I would use it as material to forge her an ancient name. Oh, Nechka, my daughter. My Nechka. I was holding her in my arms, but no matter how many times I called her name, she wouldn't open her eyes and look at me. I was the one who decided to move my workshop to the outskirts of our tribe for work. And I was the one who left her home alone. Oh, my daughter. My Nechka. Why do you have to suffer like this? <laughs> Whoa, hey, hey! It's okay, right? Nechka's getting better! She already has the strength to write letters now, doesn't she? We, uh, well, Shilonin has even brought her a gift! Sorry. I just can't control myself whenever I remember that time. Phew. Alright. It's not every day that we get guests. I really shouldn't be crying like this. I asked someone to buy some ingredients for me. So, why don't you stay for dinner tonight? I'll make some shrimp bisque, grilled fish and mint sauce, and tower tacos. Well, help! That sounds like a lot to make, and we don't want you to tire yourself out. <laughs> Thank you both, but don't worry. It's just a few dishes. I'll be fine. You three just need to make sure everything gets eaten up. I can eat a lot at this age. Oh, we haven't had anything to eat yet, so don't worry, we'll make sure there are no leftovers. Ah, 
Ah, it just occurred to me that Shalonen likes to eat cheesy crab hot pot. Why don't I make that instead of the grilled fish and mint sauce? I remember you don't like picking out fish bones. Nah, eh, both are fine with me. I've learned to just chew up the fish bones now. Oh, come on now. If you don't want to pick out the bones, I can just take them out for you. Anyway, for dessert, would you like a cup of grain fruit or chocolate? about a cup of green fruit mixed with chocolate. Okay, got it. I'll go start cooking, but could you do me a favor in the meantime? I ordered a bunch of ingredients, and they should be here any minute now. Would you go check by the door and see if they were already here? If so, please bring them in. Come on, Shilonen. Stop lying around. You shouldn't nap before dinner. It'll ruin your appetite. Hey, I'm not a kid anymore, you know. You don't have to worry about my appetite. That's beside the point. If you don't watch out for your health while you're still young, then when you get older, you'll... All right, all right. I'm getting up. We'll go check on the ingredients with Shilonen. It isn't far, so it shouldn't take us long. <sighs> that kid... Time to go. Hey, no one's come to deliver the ingredients yet. Paimon thought we'd see someone come flying down on a Yunkasaur as soon as we came out. A messenger from the Science of the Canopy wouldn't be flying here. They usually come climbing down the cliffs nearby. No need to look. There isn't anyone on the cliffs. Does Tlesoli live around here? Oh! Are you the one who's supposed to deliver the ingredients? Ingredients? Are you kidding? I was nearly eating myself! <sighs> Never mind that now. Those monsters are still hot on my heels. Please, you've got to help me! Shilonen, we... Uh... Where'd she go? Whoa, she's already gone up to fight the monsters? Uh, let's go help her out! Outlines your fate. Rain, act, frying pan. The wind knows me. Overruled. All right, that should be it for the monsters. Yeah, it was easier than I thought. Oh, it also seems we're in good luck. The goods weren't damaged either. Strange. We didn't see any monsters on the way here.
Kev Wright. I use this road to deliver goods all the time, and I've never been attacked like this before. It's the main road in and out of the tribe, so people often come here to clear out any monsters. This area is usually very safe. I don't know what happened, but it seems like all the monsters around here have gone berserk. Even the docile Tepetlosaurs are in a frenzy. <sighs> Tlesoli doesn't even forge ancient names anymore, so why can't she just move back to the tribe? If she comes back, Nechko will even be able to find some playmates. She's so young and hasn't even... Um, uh, Nechka's playmates. No, wait, I, I feel like my kids have played with her before. They've even told me about Nechka's favorite game. If I remember right, it was strange. I always remembered it before. <sighs> How could I forget all of a sudden? Look at that! He has a Blaze Gem inscription too! You should go back to the tribe. It seems like you had quite the scare today. We'll take the ingredients back for you. I'll carry these bags, and you two can carry the rest. If you say so. Thank you so much. I guess today's just a really bad day for me to go outside. Hmm... Weird. Why is everyone we run into today having trouble remembering stuff? I'm not sure how to say it, but she's got a strange feeling about this. Like it's all somehow related. Once you live long enough, you'll eventually start experiencing strange days like this. Let's bring the ingredients back. Otherwise, we won't have anything to eat tonight. Finally back. What took you so long? I was starting to worry. Oh yeah, we uh, ran into some small problems, but everything's fine now. Alright. As long as everything's okay now. You all have a seat. I'll get the food ready. It won't take long. They were all pretty simple dishes to make. Don't be shy. Dig in, everyone. serving, please? Y you're done already? Do you even chew when you're eating? Of course. Didn't I say that I chew up the fish bones? I'll have just one more fish and leave the rest for Nechka. It's okay. Just go ahead and eat all you'd like. Nechka can't eat these dishes anyway. Her body is too weak to digest these kinds of things. I'll just make some broth for her. Oh no, but Paimon thought she'd already recovered from her illness. Injuries caused by the Abyss cannot be undone. The doctor said the fact that she's stable is already quite a miracle. But it's okay. 
Nageki can talk to me now and can even hold my hand. That's more than I could ask for. Even if she will never again know that I am her mother. Wh what do you mean? The doctor said the Abyss has had an irreversible effect on Nechka's soul. She... She's lost all her memories from before she was injured. The doctor also said this sort of memory loss isn't like simply forgetting something. Rather, she can no longer remember anything from before that fateful day. Huh? But how does that happen? You know about the woven scrolls that the masters of the Nightwind use to record things, right? Well, generally speaking, forgetting things is like when the woven scrolls would gradually start to fade. As long as you repaint and weave the threads again, the faded memories will come back to life. But the case of Nechka's memory loss is as if her woven scroll had been cut in two, and the portion of the past was burnt to ashes. The books she loved to read, the flowers she took joy to grow, and the time she spent in this house were all cut off by the abyss, and can never be retrieved again. As one example of that, Nechka now only sees me as a strange, unfamiliar auntie who claims to be her mother. She's a good kid, and doesn't want to upset this lady who's been taking care of her so much, so she still calls me mom. But I've always had a feeling that she's constantly wondering about things like, where is her real mother? Why is she stuck here in this house? Was she abandoned? Nechka really has no idea that her real mother is right in front of her, and has never left. So you plan on recreating Nechka's woven scroll all by yourself? What do you mean? Or should I say, you've already started reweaving that scroll long ago. The delivery guys. I saw it hanging from his waist, so I asked to borrow it from him. <sighs> Don't worry, I'll return the inscription to him once we've figured everything out. These things aren't cheap, after all. When did you know? Yeah, I, I noticed it back when Blaze Gem inscriptions suddenly became popular among the tribe. It was then that I also noticed that everyone wearing Blaze Gem inscriptions had varying degrees of memory loss. Traveler, you've picked up on it too, haven't you? Accessories made using ancient names forging techniques. <laughs> For what's only supposed to be a pretty souvenir, this inscription contains a phlogiston engraving with a truly overkill level of complexity. The shapes and patterns of these engravings are also identical to that of an ancient name. By making just a few slight adjustments to the layout, and connections of the main pattern, you can pretty much qualify this blaze gem inscription as a bona fide ancient name. And yet, you've never told anyone about these engravings in the blaze gem inscriptions that can be activated at any time. <sighs> Am I right, Auntie? I knew you were a sharp one, Shilonin. That's right. I have a way to cure Nechka and restore all her memories. It's actually quite simple. I want to forge an ancient name for Nechka that contains all of her past memories. And the reason they must be approved by the Wyab is because the memories they bear are all stored within the ley lines. Extracting those memories from the ley lines requires the Wyab's assistance. But your plan wouldn't need you to do any of that, right, Auntie? Your blaze gem inscriptions will help you complete that part of your plan in the ley lines place. You will use the inscriptions to form a massive memory bank for Nechka. And the ancient names you're trying to forge will be used to extract corresponding memories from the memory bank. A memory bank? Wait, so the reason all those people were having trouble remembering stuff is because the blaze gem inscriptions took away any memories related to Nechka? Using other people's memories of Nechka to reconstruct her past? Ah, this is the first time I've heard of such an idea. You've seen through my plans, Shilonin. 
You're as outstanding as ever. Far more brilliant than me. I intend to use this method to collate all the memories related to Nechka, and allow her to regain her past again. But... wouldn't extracting memories like that hurt the person carrying the Blaze Gem inscription? Not at all. Every time a Blaze Gem inscription extracts memories, the process is under my precise control. That way, there's no chance of anyone in the tribe getting hurt. This is the central inscription that controls all the other Blaze Gem inscriptions, which will also soon serve as Nechka's ancient name. You made all of this yourself, Tlasoli? Yes. It was lots and lots of work. It was truly exhausting. Or perhaps I've just grown old. You saw it yourself. I nearly fainted just from being in the sun. I could collapse tomorrow, or even in the next few moments, but Nechka's ancient name is still far from completion. I've solved the issue of storing memories, but I still don't know how to connect Nechka up to this central inscription. I've thought you just modify your own ancient name. I considered it, but this matter doesn't have anything to do with my ancient name. It's of no help to me, and I don't need its help now. You know the price to pay for making something like this. Yes, I do. But as long as I can get my Nechka back, I'm willing to do whatever it takes. Otherwise, Nechka won't have any chance of reclaiming her past once I'm dead and gone. She won't remember me, and she won't even remember why her name is Nechka. When that time comes, she will be left to drift around the world all alone, unknowing of where she came from, or where she should go. She is my daughter, the one to whom I gave the Nechka name. Whether it be as her mother, or as a name engraver, I can't simply stand by and let her name disappear. Shilonin! I'll take the central inscription with me. I'm going to completely disassemble it to confirm its components and uses, and... I won't make any promises until I've checked everything. Say goodnight to Nechka for me, Auntie. Oh, wait. I've also finished inscriptions for the Traveler in Paimon. Let me fetch them for you. I'm sorry it took me so long to finish them. Hold on, Auntie. The Traveler and Paimon have never met Nechka before, so you can't draw any memories from them. That wasn't my intention. They're just ordinary gifts. Please, take them. Huh? What was that noise? Nechka must have woken up and wants to get out of bed on her own. Sorry, I'll go check on her first. Nechka, don't try to get out of bed. Just tell Mom if you need anything. You go ahead and take care of Nechka, Auntie. Let's go, Traveler and Paimon. There are a few things I want to tell you. Let's head back to the tribe first. There are some things I need to get from my workshop. Disassembling the central inscription? It's not going to be easy.